Thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, we have uh, Eduardo Torresilla, who holds a PhD in Ancient History from the University of Castilla-La Mancha. He has been a professor and a researcher at the Faculty of History and Geography from 2008 to 2017, the year in which he was a, a postdoctoral fellow at the Tel Aviv University in the Department of Archaeology and Ancient Near Eastern Cultures, under the direction of Professor Joram Cohen. Mm -hmm. Cohen. He is currently a professor of social and cultural anthropology at the International University of Valencia. And although he, he works in the field of uh, archaeology and ancient history, mm -hmm. he also is here today uh, to, to analyze with uh, the, the mimesis theory one case that is very interesting for us, no, that we live in Spain, that is the case of Catalonia. Professor Barahona is to, to blame for that because I, I studied the Master in International Relations after my PhD in, in ancient history and, and, and therefore I, that, that's why I, I became um, introduced to, to Gerard. Um, thank you all for the conversation, David, Eva, Laga, Santiago, Angel and, and, and Clemente for having me. It's, um, Honor for me to, to be here, and it's actually the second time I'm, I'm, I'm here in, at the at the UFB. Um, before I move to Catalonia, I would like to start with a, with a couple of anecdotes. Santiago was telling you I was last year um, living in, in Tel Aviv, and that's how I could have a, like a kind of a first-hand grasp of the of the social tragedy that there's. That, there, that, that is uh, happening there, and um, uh, what better mimetic clash uh, or mimetic rivalry in the, in the world today than that in the Israelis and Palestinians. And um, what I was surprised to see when I arrived there, it was mid-October 2017, so it was like a couple of weeks after the referendum in, in Catalonia, the, uni the unilateral declaration of independence, um, and so everybody was asking me, like, Spain, oh, oh, please tell us, what, what about Catalonia, what's happening there, what's going on? And something, something that struck me was that uh, expats, and mainly Arab Israelis, or Palestinians, took the side of Catalonia. They were supporting the, uh, the Catalonian uh, independentism. And I asked myself why. Because I tried to, to explain them. It, it, it was like, well, you know, it is not the same case of, of, of independentist movement. It's like, it is, it is not exactly at this, uh, the same. If, if there is such a similar case as, as the Catalonia one, we could even mention Brexit. They, of course, looked at me like with suspicion and, and they were like, uh, yeah, of course, uh, you're on the other side. What, can you, wh what, other thing you, wh what else would you say? And they were mentioned them as, you know, like, like Catalonia region as an oppressed one by the, by the Spanish government. And I was like, please tell me of another case in history where the richest region in a country is oppressed or is the oppressed one. And that's how they also just started looking or or maybe considering it and there was another day when um, an Israeli ex-soldier was giving a lecture there um, telling us of, of his experience in the Gaza Strip and of course his his talk was about was focused on on the on the human tragedy that there is in a place like, like the Gaza Street, and how before you go there, you only see identities, you only see Israel versus uh, Palestine, uh, Hamas, and, and, and your own identity, and then you meet humans, you get along with humans, and you come to care for humans that, they are, that are not on your side. And you also care, them, um, care about them when, when, when they die when they uh, face problems. But still, <clears throat> the questions and, and answers turn. There was this girl, who, <clears throat> an American girl, who asked, what I don't understand is why is 
everybody against us. Why is the international community, all of them, supporting Palestine? What, uh, why are they even supporting a, a terrorist organization? And he, he replied, um, look, when there's a conflict, there are two sides. And then there's the rest of the world, which is not involved. And they probably don't even care. Or if they care, they may have an interest, but they don't have the time to have all the information. So eventually, they come to support the weaker one, automatically, even unconsciously. And he said, and of course, we are not the weaker ones here. And I started thinking, and I started wondering, could we uh, move this kind of thinking, which is totally mimetic, which is totally ex like explainable from the Girardian, the Girardian point of view, could we adapt it to the case of Catalonia? And I'm going to leave it aside because, of course, what I don't mean is that, that uh, Catalonia and Spain have uh, nothing to do with the, with the Israeli and, and, and Palestinian conflict because, of course, it is much more of a conflict, like it's an ethnic, social, uh, political, religious conflict and, and, and it's, a, a, of course, a war. But I will come back to it in a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, um, this we all more or less know. Uh, how can we link uh, nationalism or independentism to, to scapegoating? Um, what do we know of scapegoating? Or what did Girard say about scapegoating? A community um, turns against an individual or a, or a minority in order to overcome a mimetic rivalry process, a mimetic rivalry tension and escalation of, of violence. And in the, at the moment of crisis, let's say, what are the characteristics of the um, of the scapegoat? He's innocent. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, uh, according to Gerard, I mean, he's innocent, but the rest of the community thinks that he is guilty because of the reconnaissance. Uh, there's a total polarization against him, and this polarization is unconscious, and this polarization has a collective aim, which is to put an end to the crisis. So the sacrifice of the scapegoat uh, has the means of returning to the previous stability, to put, a, to put an end to the fear and to put an end to the insecurity that the crisis has brought to the whole community. In this context, then the citizens' fears, the population's, the population's fears, are going to be really useful for the powerful, or for those who want to take power. So a rival identity or minorities always tend to be used as scapegoats. So how does nationalist propaganda use this? They use fears, they, like, they, they take advantage of, of the population's fears, for example, um, economic crisis, unemployment, insecurity towards um, maybe crimes in the street and they also take advantage of their enthusiasm for example by exploiting na national pride they are always um, claiming for a change uh, the system they, they say that it is obsolete they want a radical change and they were they want to recover uh, the, the greatness of a country of the country that it's supposedly lost. For example, the "Make America Great Again" slogan by, slogan by, by Donald Trump. Um, they claim themselves as protectors of the of the identity. And if you are protecting the identity, obviously there is an other that is attacking it. And this other is going to be the scapegoat. And of course, if you're uh, a nationalist. The scapegoat is going to be foreigners, so it's be immigrants, or it's going to be the neighboring nation. Or, in the case of uh, independentists, it's going to be the nation itself of which they want to separate. 
but it is important to mention that they exploit, but they don't create this scapegoat. The scapegoats uh, have coexisted with the majority for decades, centuries, uh, in a context where uh, there was a mutual formation of stereotypes. This context is what they, the nationalists are going to exploit. There's also a sacred symbol symbology, of which they call themselves defenders. Uh, think of flags, think of uh, national anthems, <coughs> think of language, uh, like for example in the Catalonian independentism. What does this kind of uh, symbology, um, let's say, mean? It means a process of differentiation. We were talking about um, a process of coexistence. In this process of coexistence, as Girard said, uh, there is a process of mutual imitation, up to the point that there are no more differences. So it's slight, or the slightest difference is going to be really, um, really valuable in order to make or to contrast or to, or, or to uh, get a better, a better um, picture of this, of these differences. Because they're going to play the card of identity, which means us versus them. I need to create <clears throat> a definition of us, and it's going to be in opposition to other, to the other. So any single kind of difference, as slight as it, as it may be, it's going to be really, really useful. That's why they usually turn even um, sacred, and they can get really offended if you talk against them. They're also going to play the card of democracy. What does it mean? Um, if I picture the other as the bad guy, as the oppressor, then uh, I'm going to apply myself concepts like democrat, like uh, liberal, the one who is fighting for his freedom. So the other is uh, pictured as, as an oppressing nation, and then I am, I'm, I am going to be the victim. And this is even easier in our context because Spanish nationalism is l too linked to the Francoist regime. Because um, Franco was the, 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 the only Spaniard, Spanish government in, in power in the last, in the last hundred or hundred years who, who applied uh, nationalism successfully, or who used nationalism successfully. So it is too linked to his regime, the, this, this Spanish nationalism. It, 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 it sounds too fascist. Um, so it is even easier to picture yourself as a Democrat if you are talking against the Spanish national, nationalism or the Spanish national symbols. So there's also a kind of um, uh, a tiny bit of supremacism in the, in the um, Catalanist, uh, let's say, propaganda. So freedom, victimism, um, uh, democracy, all of these concepts, uh, if you talk to an, to an uh, international audience, to a neutral audience, <coughs> it's going to be easier to get their support by, the, by, by of course, the international public opinion, not by uh, uh, the international institutions who know better. And, and, and who did not support the, the Catalan na nationalism. But public opinion is going to buy easily your, your theories. Because it's like what the Israeli ex-soldiers said. The useful thing is that they, they kind of support the weaker ones. And of course, Catalan, Catalans are a minority within the whole state. Take a look, for, for example, at the, at the picture, the Junes per la Democracia. That's from the um, electoral program by, by Junes per Catalunya. 
in December 2017, the last regional elections. And that's the name of uh, one of the chapters. Uh, it, it was like three <coughs> different chapters. Junes per al nostre president, of course. Junes per la democràcia. And the last one, Junes per la cohesió social. Not Junes per la independència. They were not mentioning independence in the whole electoral oh, program. They know better, too. <laughs> what are the risk factors, then, uh, of having um, a rise of um, nationalist parties or independentist parties in, um, in, in a country? First of all, an economic crisis, which provokes immediately a rise of unemployment. This is going to, to spark fear among the population who needs uh, quick solutions in order to re get another job, uh, retake their lives, pay their bills, and not being afraid of their, uh, of their future. Second, traditional parties uh, get, ex get their popularity exhausted. Measures that did not uh, work, and also, for example, in this country, there's a lot of corruption scandals, they're involved in, in corruption scandals, there are even uh, um, sentences in, in tribunals, and then there's this uh, mistrust in the, in the citizenship about, or, or sorry, towards uh, these parties and also towards the whole system, the whole democratic system. That's like it, it, it even spreads this, this mistrust. So it is a really big and complicated field for a party that precisely what they, what they propose is a radical change. And also, I mentioned it before, uh, there's a rival nation already as a scapegoat, which is the other. It's going to play the part of the other. It has been previously stigmatized and it is minoritary. So it is going to be easier to prove them guilty. To prove, of course, uh, no quote. Um, why am I saying that the Spanish identity is going to be minority in Spain? Because it is not what I mean. And please forgive me for this silly picture. I, I, made, I made it myself. Uh, it is just to illustrate what I, what I mean. Um, of course, in the whole of Spain, Spanish nationality is um, obviously majoritary. Um, so we are 47 million people, and um, I think it, it, it's uh, 5 million foreigners. Among these 47 million people, Catalans are a minority because they are only 7 million. Good. But take only the Catalan part, the Catalan region, which is the electorate that Junts per Catalunya wants. And the, the electorate that they care for. There, the Catalans are a majority. And the Spanish born, the let's say non Catalans, Spanish non Catalans are a minority. I also mentioned the um, uh, unemployment as one of the risk factors. This is the unemployment rate in Catalonia in the worst times of the crisis. From the very beginning to up to 2016, um, we can see a rise of unemployment. If you take a look at the black line, which is the third one from starting from above, uh, that corresponds to 25 to 54 year olds. That's about a rise from 8% towards more or less 21, 22 percent in 2012, 2013. More or less the same figures as in the rest of Spain. But it is even more dramatic for the youth. 16 to 24 year olds, they rose from 20 percent to 50 percent in the same uh, years. Again, also the same figures as in the rest of, of Spain. What if we compare? This, uh, this rate to the rise of uh, independentism in the same years. 
We can do it by going to the, um, to the survey that um, every three, four months the Generalitat does. And they ask several questions. And um, one of them is, do you believe that Catalonia should be a region in Spain or an autonomous community in Spain, which means mm, staying at, uh, as it is right now, a state in federal Spain, or an independent state? Uh, now, as we can see, it's, it's 39% uh, for an independent state. But if we take a look at below, and I'm going to make it bigger for you, and I'm going to use only those years that we were seeing before, we're starting from April uh, 2008, and you can see that the, the blue line, the, the navy blue line, is the independentist one. That's a 17.6, uh, 17 even 16 percent of independentists. That's the first months of the crisis. Um, then comes around June, July 2010, the sentence by the Constitutional Tribunal, uh, excluding these polemic clauses uh, from the Estatut, the one that, especially the one that mentioned that Catalonia was a nation within Spain. Um, so if we take a look at June to 2010, more or less, it is rising to 24, 25%. That coincides also with the moment when um, Artur Mas decided to turn his strategy towards independence. Why? Because, of course, he didn't want to get um, or, or, or to get expelled, let's say, by the crisis, as, for example, Zapatero was. So he opted for an independentist strategy. Um, then let's move to October 11, more or less. 28%, the thing is rising. And then there's a dramatic exponential rise up to, let's say, more or less, October 12, even February the 13, we're getting 44%, 46%. That's the first year of government, of the government of Mariano Rajoy. At the time, the most nationalist party in Spain. Of course, now, now, nowadays we know that, that what the nationalist party, what a really nationalist party is in, 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 the, in the Spanish side, right? But at the time, that was, first of all, uh, what we thought was, uh, was uh, the most nationalist party in Spain that could be, that there could be, and most of all, it was the party that had uh, presented that motion against the, the Estatut in Catalonia. So they were totally uh, blamed for that in Catalonia. So uh, if we compare again to the rise of unemployment, it also coincides, which means uh, both ingredients were really, really important. First, unemployment, and then, of course, a party that is offering you already the independentist solution, and then comes to, the, to power in Spain, in the central government, uh, the party that you blame for. There's another question they ask in this in this poll, and this is more precise, as they as they say more precisely. Do you want Catalonia to become an independent independentist? Sorry, an independent state. Um, I use this I use this uh, this this date, which is January 2018, because I find it really interesting. It is only three or four months after the referendum, the, uh, the 1st of October referendum, and the unilateral declaration of independence. Uh, by that time, I'm sorry if you cannot see it, but uh, October, the 17, uh, October 2017, if you, if you see the table below, uh, it was like a, a obvi the, the obvious 48, 49% pro-independence, 43, 44, or no. But here tables turn only three, four months later. Like, you can blame even the disappointment for, the, uh, for what had happened, for what had just happened. But there is a no, like a 54% of no. But 
let's go ahead. The end of the, uh, by the end of the year, tables turn again. <laughs> what, do I what, what, what do I just want to say about this? It is just that uh, it is so unstable. Uh, is a country, and I allow me the word, the, the word country for Catalonia, uh, prepared to, to take that step with such a divided opinion uh, that is taking these, these uh, you know, steps back and forth every month. But, obviously, now it is one out of two Catalans pro-independence, as of course the electoral ele uh, the, the, the elections are, are, are also showing. And now, of course, we have what we call in, Spa in Spanish the rebound effect, or the, the, la the lashback, which is Vox. <laughs> this screenshot is from last Monday. Um, please help me and, and, and count the, the, <laughs> the number of times that you, that you see the word España. And flags everywhere, of course. And they have come to teach us what a good Spaniard is, of course. Take, for, take a look, for example, at the La España Viva. Yeah, they're uh, calling themselves. Yeah, they're calling themselves <laughs> as La España Viva, which is which means that the rest of us, if, if we don't vote for them, we are the, the non-living Spaniards, and the, which means the bad Spaniards. And the worst thing is that it has worked. It is working right now. So the rest of the parties are starting to, to send messages to those uh, Vox voters. Hey, we, la we love Spain too. We are, we, we are even better Spaniards. Take a look at this. These, these are from the, from the very same day, from, from Monday too. And these were like from meetings uh, last weekend. So I go now for the conclusions. Um, mm, taking... Uh, retaking, let's say, uh, Girard. Um, something that we actually already knew. Uh, stereotypes and propaganda, it's a uh, really dangerous mix. Because they promote intolerance, because they promote scapegoating, and because, maybe even more important, they block the, 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 the necessary debate, and they block the, de the necessary search for real causes and solutions for the real ones. And these stereotypes, this propaganda are encouraged precisely by those responsible, which are the politicians. Because it started as a political problem. It used to be a political problem. Now it is a social one because it has spread. So the, the situation has heated uh, because the mimetic spiral is going on and nobody's stopping it and probably they are not interested in it. So this is why, for example, the unemployment descent that the, the Catalonia is experiencing, of course, uh, the quality of, of employment is, is not that good, uh, but it's still uh, descending. But it was not accompanied by a reverse of separatism because separatism is still going on. The, 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 the mimetic spiral of, separa of separatism is still on. So what I fear is that we could have a, an isolated case of, uh, of, of violence, um, like, for example, uh, Anders Breivik. I'm always saying the, the, the same example, but uh, um, and of course maybe I'm exaggerating, but um, there's always this risk that Amin Malouf um, already said that the violent ones, the typical um, violent and or even mentally ill uh, person that there always is within a community, thinks that in the name of his own identity, defending it even, must act and must take the power or, or must take uh, an action and it's going to be vital. Um, 
and it's going to be again in defense, like according to his own uh, argument, it's going to be an, in defense of his own identity. The problem here, also def uh, also said by by Amin Malouf, is that it is even possible that <coughs> once this happened, and let's pray the Lord it doesn't happen, uh, it could even be justified by by their own uh, identity members. Because they're also like using the same concepts and the same uh, mystification of, of, of arguments. Um, if this happens, if, if there is an act of violence and it is even justified by, by their community, one way or another, then we could even have a violent response by the others. Because they could have even confirmed those stereotypes that they put on the, the now violent identity. And then the spiral again goes on and goes on and goes on and this, uh, what, the, what we were saying again uh, before about the, 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 defendants, the, the defense to the extremes mm -hmm. and this uh, word that uh, Girard said about uh, the most, what was the most prosecu... The, the, like the, the worst prosecutions are done in the name of the fight against prose prosecution. Mm -hmm. Um, so, it, it, there, there is this, uh, this, uh, this danger of uh, the spiral going on, going on up to the point of, uh, of becoming a, a predatory identity, as Arjuna Padurai uh, called it. Um, well, I had prepared these solutions. Maybe if you want, we can leave it for the debate. And it's, uh, actually, there are like two optimistic solutions. Uh, uh, I don't even I don't even believe myself. I don't like that. I, 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 it's the the perfect scenario, of course. But it's it believe me, it's not gonna happen. But well, the typical call for a dialogue. Yes, um, maybe we should demand a dialogue. Of course, it it should be uh, something popular. Like the political interests are. Uh, are, are much more powerful, but evidently this could decrease tensions, the, this could lead to a, a reverse of the mimetic escalation, because they are the ones who, who created it, and they are the ones who have the means to, to use the propaganda against this mimetic escalation. We should also get a responsible media involvement, a responsible one, not, not, not that one that, that has like uh, cared only for audiences. Uh, a media involvement, involvement that um, encouraged uh, teaching um, individuals how to deal with this, T uh, encouraging self-research. Why do I think as I do? Why uh, have I become independentist when five years ago, uh, ago I was not? Is it that important? Uh, is independentism going to solve my problems, really going to solve my problems? Why do I always blame Catalans? Why do I think they have something against uh, Spain? Why do I think they are uh, always to blame? And this could even um, lead to start understanding the other by researching them, by reading about them, by listening to them, by seeing the human as the, for example, the Israeli ex-soldier that I told you about uh, started seeing when fighting against it. Um, this could lead to understanding their motivations, understanding their reasons. Uh, if we don't do that, of course, we run the risk of uh, getting the both sides uh, getting mystic about, about their own arguments. And that's all I had to, to tell you. Thank you very much for your attention.